Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about how to manage jet lag. Uh, so you might notice that I do not look like my typical sparkling self uh, sitting here in my office having an enormous cup of coffee um, because I just returned from an international trip and I am experiencing that phenomenon that I'm sure we're all experienced with uh, commonly called jet lag or difficulty adjusting to changes in time zones. Now, many of you may not know this, but I work extensively with insomnia um, using a technique called CBTI or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for insomnia. Um, and jet lag to me seems like it naturally kind of fits in with that whole, you know, realm of work that I do with sleep and difficulty sleeping. And I figured what better time to uh, share information on some jet lag with all of you when I'm experiencing it intensely myself. So without further introduction, let's just talk about some quick tips to help you adjust to local time zones as quickly as possible and get to enjoying your trip as quickly as possible. Um, so the really the first thing that you want to be aware of is trying to adjust to the local time as quickly as possible, including being on the plane. And this means both sleeping and eating cycles. So for example, um, you know, let's say you're due to land um, in another country that's several time zones away at six o'clock in the morning and you land and you're feeling exhausted. The first thing you wanna do is head straight to bed. Um, you're not interested in having breakfast. Do your best to not do that. Um, so sometimes it helps to have some things planned. If you can kind of keep yourself awake until a more regular sleeping time, you know, whatever that is for you, because everybody's different, let's just say arbitrarily, you know, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. is your regular sleeping time. That will help you if you can kind of make it through that first day, adjust a lot more quickly. If you have, if you absolutely have to nap, if you are just gonna be miserable, unless you take a nap, um, try real hard to keep it under 20 minutes, you know, kind of cat nap territory. Um, so hopefully it won't interfere with your sleep later on at night and interfere in your adjustment to the time zone. Meal time, again, try right away and beginning on the plane, which they will actually help you do on the plane, uh, but then continue that when you land to adjust your meals to the local time. So Again, if it's six in the morning, you know, try to have at least some breakfast at seven or eight. Try to have your lunch at lunchtime, your dinner at dinner time, even though in addition to your sleep wake cycles being off, your hunger cues and your hunger cycles are going to be off. And the more you can just tell your body, no, this is breakfast time, this is lunchtime, this is sleep time, you will adjust a lot more quickly. Um, so anything else in your routine, in addition to eating, that you might do at a particular time of day, like let's say certain exercises or anything like that, again, if you are going to continue to do those while you're away, get them on local time as soon as possible. Be kind to yourself, especially that first day or two, you are likely going to be exhausted. And it can be a very helpful thing to just make that an expectation. You know, I don't expect to roll off the plane and feel amazing the second that I hit the tarmac. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be gentle with myself. I might plan to go at a slower pace the first day or two, and that's okay. Um, additionally, expect to wake up at weird times during the night. Um, that's something that can really fuel anxiety, especially if you're trying really hard to adjust to the local time as quickly as possible. So if you wake up in the middle of the night, rather than thinking, ah, oh, this means that I'm doing a bad job at adjusting and now I'm going to be exhausted the next day. And this is terrible. And of course, the more you think that, the more difficult it's going to be to, you know, fall back to sleep. Just try telling yourself, okay, this is a normal phenomenon that happens to people when they're feeling jet lagged. I'm up. If 20 minutes have gone by and you absolutely can't fall back to sleep, um, I'm going to give you the same advice that I would give to anybody with run-of-the-mill insomnia that's not jet lag induced. Get up, go sit somewhere else, do something kind of boring. You know, you don't want to watch TV or listen to exciting music. 
Um, maybe do a crossword puzzle. No offense to crossword puzzle doers. I don't find that boring, but again, it's it might not be overly stimulating. Read a magazine. Uh, do that until you feel tired um, and then go back to sleep and remind yourself, you know, that you will be OK, that likely you functioned on less sleep before and cutting a few out of hours out of your day. There's my jet lag kicking in um, is not likely going to significantly interfere in your day the next day. Um, and this goes both ways. So when you're returning from your trip, you want to employ these same strategies to get yourself back on your regular local time as quickly as possible. And final note, regardless of jet lag, don't forget to enjoy yourself. Uh, happy travels, and I wish you all an easy adjustment to jet lag. Um, and I promise a short video also explaining CBTI for insomnia coming soon for those who might be interested. Uh, my name is Dr. Jana Scrivani, and if you're interested in learning more about me or what I do, you can visit www.janascrivani.com. So that's J-A-N-A-S-C-R-I-V-A-N-I.com. Uh, see y'all soon.